Are you ready? Hello. Um, so, um, hello everybody. Um, you know, thank you for your time. Um, Stephen has said uh, many times how excited he is, and uh, I think that goes for all of us. Everybody in Achico is really pleased and indeed delighted that we have this opportunity to launch something that is very, very special um, in Indonesia. Um, you've heard a lot of the reasons why Indonesia was so um, predominant in our, our, our focus um, to launch. But, uh, you know, I think I just want to say this right at the start, and I, you'll see why. Um, it is very, very important to understand that this is new chemistry. This is really quite special. Um, it's not a PCR test, and it is not a lateral flow antigen test. It is completely new chemistry. So I'd be quite happy. A lot of people seem to be very confused about what the different tests are and how they work. Um, and yes, they all have various advantages. Um, but what I'm going to try and highlight with this brief presentation is to show you what Aptimex brings to the table um, in, a, in a new way. And, and, you know, I've had very brief translations from, from colleagues in Chico. Uh, telling me what some of the speakers have said and I've noticed you know the the issue of, of pain and the need for rapid testing and accurate testing and so I'm going to try and highlight to you what we've achieved and, um, and why we're so excited about this because um, there is a new paradigm shift needed in the way that we tackle uh, COVID-19 and I, when I say we I mean the globe this is a pandemic and it is my opinion strongly and I think you'll find that a lot of other people agree that this is going to be endemic. So um, without uh, without rambling on too much, uh, if I could ask, um, I'm not sure who is clicking the slides, if you could go um, to the uh, first slide, please. That's lovely, thank you very much. Um, so, you know, as I said, it, it, this, this test, as you've heard, this is, first of all, uh, I, I think it was, I'm, I'm very sorry, I think it was Wanda who mentioned to you all that, um, one of the issues is that uh, the, the the tests that are available are, are they're invasive and they hurt. Um, uh, you know, my children don't particularly like stuffing things up their nose, and I'm sure all of you realise that there is a variance in putting something up your nose. Some people are going to do it properly and right to the back of your nose, right up here where it hurts, and some people just do it here. Well, obviously, if you do it here, you're not going to get the result. So the accuracy is already flawed. So the important, there are various important benefits of, of Aptimex, but the most important part of this really to start with is it's non-invasive. It, we're using a saliva-based test. So you basically spit into a thing and you put that into a, a machine that will read, and I'll explain how it works, that will read uh, your sample and you'll get that result back incredibly quickly. Um, so the other advantage, again, I'll come to that and why, it's synthetic. Um, and what that means is compared to, example, a PCR test, which is uh, antibody based, antibodies have to be cultured and then harvested. And that means from chickens, goats, whatever. Um, these are obviously, that's an obviously a very expensive process because those, any animal that is used has to be homogenous. It has to be, um, if you like, hematically kind of, you know, proven to be, um, I can't think, consistent. So. You know, there is obviously huge cost with PCR tests. So moving to that, the, the fact that we're synthetic and we can, um, uh, you know, actually, basically, we can't print it, but we can, using DNA technology, we can basically sequence this, the Aptima uh, at huge volumes. Um, and the last, the last advantage that we have is, is our price point. Um, you know, it, it's saying, you know, I say circa $2 there. That's what we're aiming for. We're not sure of the exact price yet because unfortunately commodities are rising at the moment in cost, but we're pretty certain we can deliver it far below the cost of a lateral flow test, far below. Um, so I put this in because this is really, really important. We all understand um, vaccination, or at least I hope we do. Uh, and the simple way to view vaccination is that we're trying to achieve fundamentally herd immunity. And that's about 70% of the population. So luckily in the West, we are, you know, frankly being greedy in many ways. We can, that's another debate to have. But um, the issue is, uh, you know, vaccination is proceeding at a, a pace in, in the West. 
uh, and we're achieving, if you like, herd immunization. Um, however, there are a lot of issues surrounding that, which I'm not going to go into because I'm not a medical doctor. But the important issue here that's from Harvard in the USA is they're highlighting that really the need to um, have accurate mass testing is now more important than ever because the two are going to work alongside each other. You set, you need, you know, we, we all know that we, we, we stay with masks on, we're, we're a certain distance apart from each other. And these things are incredibly important, but also being able to test and therefore isolate people quickly who are contagious, who have, have the virus, is important to stop the spread of that contagion. So that's why I'm just highlighting that very quickly. So um, this slide basically shows you how it works. Uh, and uh, very simply, um, you know, the wording is there and the, the schematic is there too. Um, so what you have, um, if you can see my hands, is fundamentally you have a, a, a gold particle and you have your aptima. And these are bound together in loosely, we're calling it a conjugate. It's not a conjugate, but it is bound together with uh, various um, chemical bonds, van der Waal forces, etc., which are strong enough to maintain in a stable kind of um, condition our DNA aptima conjugate, okay? And that gold um, aptima conjugate. Now, at this point, um, the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, virus with its um, spike has a very high affinity to bind to the aptima. Okay, now this aptima is a sequence of DNA, as you heard um, Professor Adele say. Um, so what happens is, in the presence of COVID-19, the gold drops off, and you have, I'm trying to change my hand, you have, you have alongside it, the virus bound to the aptima. Now the detection is the gold dropping off. That gold aggregates, and you have a spectrochemical change. So you have a spectral chemical change which shows whether you have the virus or not. Obviously, if there's no presence of the virus, then the conjugate, as we're calling it, is intact and there's no chemical change. There's no spectral chemical change. So that's a simple explanation of how it works. So um, just to, uh, you know, this is obviously, you know, COVID-19 testing is difficult. I, I'm not sure if this has been spoken about um, there are, you know, fundamentally, um, there seems to be confusion around what testing is. So um, the tests that are commonly available are, you know, basically um, RNA tests, which are, uh, which fundamentally is the PCR test, which involves antibodies, lateral flow tests, um, and they actually detect the proteins per se associated with uh, the COVID-19 virus. And, and then finally, there's antibody tests. Now, antibody tests really are only for, um, you know, checking whether you've had the virus already. So in, in terms of testing uh, diagnostically for whether you have it, you have these two tests, um, which are PCR and lateral flow. Now, the important part of this slide, really, don't worry about all the graphs in great detail. But what you have with a PCR, so to explain, a PCR test uh, involves um, CT scores. So a CT score is basically a cycle going around. So until you see the virus, one, two, three, four. So a CT score of 25 before you see the virus is a sort of reasonable amount of virus being present. So if you're testing at what would be a low CT score, so let's say 20, then you're going to have a high viral load. Now that's pretty obvious. You're talking about somebody basically being, uh, you know, face down on a bed with an oxygen mask, as in you can visually see that they have COVID. Um, so testing them at a CT score that has a low CT score, pretty indicative that they have COVID. What's really interesting is being able to test people when they are asymptomatic. So fundamentally they are not showing symptoms, but they are carrying that virus. And that is the, 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 the sort of uh, uh, accepted mean is around a score of 28. So this chart on the right with the red box shows you um, the, the average viral load and, how, and where it's detected. So that's kind of the peak area that we're looking at. Um, next slide, please. So 
Sorry, next slide. Oh, no, 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 you've gone too far, sorry, back one. Okay, so the only thing to notice about this, uh, and this is really, really important, I reiterate this again, Aptimex is not a lateral flow antigen test. It is not a lateral flow antigen test. What I'm highlighting here is that the rapid tests that you have in circulation at the moment, not just in Indonesia, but everywhere, Look at the figures at the end. At a high CT score, so that is a low viral load, 11% sensitive, 11% likelihood of picking up or detecting, diagnosing you as having COVID. 11%. That's a 1 in 10 chance. That's too risky in my opinion. So, um, this is why rapid tests remain contentious when compared to PCR, because PCR are the gold standard, as Dr. Michael Dell said, they are the gold standard. But we're not in competition with these. What we're saying is we have new chemistry. So next slide, please. Thank you. So this slide basically highlights very clearly some uh, published data. This isn't us taking the data. This is published data. The references are down below on that slide. And what you can see is what I just said. So the CT score of 32, which is 4.4 cycles higher than the mean that is accepted, i.e. 28. The sensitivity of the rapid test in circulation that you are buying is much, much, much less efficient than ours. So the figures of Aptimex, which I want you to focus on, it's not, again, we're not competing with these other tests and their science. What we're saying is, look at our results. So at a CT score of 28, which is the mean, we're showing 77.59, nearly 80%. More importantly, and they're showing 68 there, which is Abbott's test. But most importantly, at the very, very high CT score, a very low viral load, we are able, still able, to pick up clearly the presence of COVID. So our test is accurate. It shows a very high sensitivity at very, very low viral loads. Okay, next slide, please. Um, yeah, so this really is it's kind of positioning of what I'm trying to say in relevance to where we are, what is Aptimex and where we are. So if you look at this slide um, and, and the issue, so going back to what the Harvard professor has, has highlighted, uh, that alongside vaccination, we need um, mass testing that is accurate. So PCR is the gold standard. There is no question about that, um, but they are slow and they are expensive. And when I say they're slow, they can take up 72 hours. They are laboratory based before you get your result. So what we have here is really very, as, it's, as I've written there, or, or, or one of my colleagues has written actually, um, is, is an expensive contact tracing system. Very accurate, but very expensive and difficult to uh, access. So the other thing about PCR tests is they are, you know, they're cultured they're, and then they're harvested. Antibodies are required. And so there is a glass ceiling to the level of production. So therefore they are limited. And as the FDA in the USA state, you should seek a PCR test for absolute confirmation of COVID. Regardless of that, rapid tests are faster, much faster, minutes. But they're not as sensitive as I've just shown in the last slide. So you can see this graphically shown the advantages of, of, of both but also the limitations of both. Next slide, please. So what we need is a revolution, an evolution, a, a paradigm shift in COVID-19 testing. And this is where what we have, what Aptimex, what Chico have with Aptimex product Aptimex is a very special new chemistry and a new test. The red circle is where we'd all like to be. So a little less accurate, but its availability is excellent and its price point is lower than the currently available. Well, that's what we all like because that enables mass testing. Well, guess what? That's Aptimex. So that's where Aptimex sits. 
So that's not at the moment, although we are certain we are, we currently have a clinical biostatistician in Great Ormond Street Hospital in, um, which is very famous. I don't know if you've, if you've heard of it. It's a children's hospital in London. Um, we have a clinical biostatistician uh, analyzing our data at the moment. And we are certain that our results are going to be improved by at least 10%. So going back to the 80%, that's 90%. So we are very, very confident that we have an excellent product. Um, so uh, next slide, please. Right, this is, again, these slides are becoming a little bit more um, complicated. So I don't want you to worry too much. What this is trying to highlight is the infectious period, the distribution of viral load over time. So as with a common cold, you pick it up, we don't know when, I mean, coronavirus is a form of that, but you know, you pick it up, we don't know when, you don't show the symptoms, suddenly you start coughing and sneezing. Not dissimilar to COVID-19, it's more extreme. So, but you're still infectious for a latent period after that. And what we're trying to highlight here, and it's difficult to see, but in the, um, in, in the red uh, writing, the gap that Aptamex is operating is so longer, is able to last for longer uh, days after the infection at a very high accurate rate when other lateral flow tests can't. Um, next slide, please. Again, this is merely highlighting, you can see on the curve where the other tests are. It, what we're showing here is that, you know, again, I keep reiterating and highlighting this. We're looking at, um, you know, a CT score. So all the enzyme-based lateral flow antigen tests all have uh, good sensitivities, but only when their CT scores are very high, low, very high viral load detection capacity is present below 25. Uh, greater than 30, you should say 32 there, 35, I don't know, 35. The viral loads are really low. And again, Aptamex at CT28.3 is showing 77. That is higher than the aforementioned Abbott test. So that's what I'm trying to highlight on that curve. So finally, uh, we just go to the last two slides. The advantages, sorry, thank you. So really just to, to, to reiterate this again, um, you know, first of all, it's non-invasive. So it involves a spit test, okay? Um, then, it, you know, which is obviously easy and convenient, but the issue, it, again, is it's, it's accuracy at low viral lows is extremely high, extremely high. We're very, very pleased with this. It's accurate. It has a very selective binding to specifically, uh, and this is interesting too, as far as we know at the moment on the variants that we've been able to test against, it's shown no differentiation between the different variants. It is testing those variants. And finally, you know, it is, it, it, it's incredibly fast. It says 15 minutes there, we can do it in 10. And I'd just like to point this out. This is very important. The actual test, so when you take the saliva, the actual reading takes one minute. The processing of that to your phone when you will have the digital passport is 10 minutes. That's the whole the process. So, and finally, it's cost effective. And, you know, really what we're trying to say here, and this is incredibly important, it's, it's we can't rely on PCR testing and because of the ability to, the inability to scale. So we're trying to enhance that. We're not in competition with PCR and we're not in competition fundamentally with all lateral flow testing. But what we are saying is that we actually offer a cheaper alternative and we can produce it at huge volumes. Enzymes are still expensive to detect. So, um, for, sorry, finally, the last, the, the very last um, slide, please. So yeah, the majority of things I've said, I, you know, I think the only thing that you need to take away, so yes, I beg your pardon, it, what's interesting there, uh, and it possibly shouldn't have, the, it doesn't make it clear, the sensitivity that we have seen in Spain, um, which it was a prototype, so it shouldn't actually be there, but it is there, I apologise for that, but actually it doesn't matter, that's a laboratory prototype result. Um, so the Peak and Baru testing was undertaken in field, in the field, uh, and we've 
you know, undergone rigorous testing. And as I say, currently a clinical biostatistician is looking at that data. And we're more than confident that she is going to produce 10 or 15% on sensitivity and specificity very shortly. So uh, that's Aptimex, ladies and gentlemen. I reiterate, it is not a, a PCR test. It's not antibody based. And it is not a lateral flow test. Um, it is a new form of chemistry. It's a paradigm shift in being able to diagnose um, the effectiveness, uh, so being an effective diagnostic in the fight fundamentally against COVID-19. And, you know, I reiterate what that private, uh, what that Harvard professor said, and this is really, really important. You know, vaccination is one thing, but it's interesting because vaccines now, they're talking about you're going to need a third booster if you're lucky enough to get one or two. But, you know, that means the effectiveness of vaccines has been questioned. These are in independently written, published papers, scientific papers in respect to journals. So we know, though, that it is reducing the, they do reduce the incidence of hospitalization. So, yes, vaccine technology is extraordinary. It is truly extraordinary what we've achieved, not least the fact that there are two new messenger RNA vaccinations, which have never been done before within a year. Um, I actually find that quite exciting that there is two new vaccine technologies of messenger RNA. And um, we are basically using a very small section of DNA that shows high affinity for COVID-19. So, you know, the new science will always come out and we're, we're very, very excited to present this to you and launch this uh, in Indonesia. And, you know, I'd just like to say at this point, thank you very much to all our partners uh, and indeed to our entire team who've worked frankly, you know, incredibly hard, really, really hard to get this out. It is not easy, as anybody in this field will understand and know, it is not easy to launch a, any form of medical product. It involves clinical trials and testing that costs money and time and things invariably go wrong. Anybody who's been a scientist knows that things go wrong. So anyway, thank you very much to all the team and thank you very much for the opportunity to launch this to Indonesia. I have uh, one thing. Since it's new, uh, could you comment on what epidemiologists or virologists think of the value of this testing and what sets up the next part? So what do I think of the value? Yes. Yeah. So as I said, uh